and welcome to From No Crypto to No Crypto. This is Blockchain Wayne bringing you another cryptocurrency podcast. Been a few days, so we're going to catch you up on what's happened over the weekend and looking at what's going on in the market. So today's episode is brought to us by Coincierge Club, mobile private key wallet and point of sale solution. Coincierge Club makes purchasing easy, safe, and the overall process more efficient while costing less, helping to make cryptocurrency mainstream. So let's see what's going on in the market update. Over the last 24 hours, the market is slightly green, Bitcoin up 1.5%. But since our last episode, we are down still about 2% from a high Bitcoin around 6,500. Total crypto market cap is currently sitting right exactly even with $200 billion. And Bitcoin dominance is sitting at 55.02%. If you remember, Bitcoin had crept all the way up to 57% dominance. But we've seen some altcoins with some big runs. Ethereum's up 18% over the last seven days. Ripple up 26.5% over the last seven days. And Tezos up 17% with some other seven, eight, and nine digit gains on some other altcoins. Altcoins, once Bitcoin typically stabilizes, we do see the altcoins go into a little bit of recovery mode, and that's what we're seeing happening. But the bears are still in control until we can break above that $6,800 mark and start moving north, we are still living with the bears. All right, so let's take a look at what's going on in the market news right now. So NASDAQ is acquiring a crypto-friendly Swedish exchange called Cinnabar. Cinnabar has a history for bullishness towards digital assets and making it easier for institutions to invest in them. One of those efforts is the partnership with BitGo, a behemoth for institutional grade cryptocurrency custody security. BitGo has built partnerships and acquisitions over its history, which helped its firm up in its mission, including the acquisition of Kingdom Trust and a partnership with the South Korea exchange Corbett. It, so is NASDAQ preparing for crypto trading? That could be possible. If you remember, ICE, which is the owner of the New York Stock Exchange, is also working on crypto security holdings and crypto assets. So it looks like NASDAQ is ready to play in that game as well. Also, uh, the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission, Hes Commissioner, sorry, should I say, Commissioner Hester Pierce has stated that the government should not limit the emergence of new products in the crypto market based on the perceived weakness of Bitcoin. According to Pierce, the SEC should not force crypto markets to be subjected to comprehensive government regulation just to deploy products on top of the markets. Now, if you remember, Hester Pierce is also the commissioner that spoke out when the Winklevoss ETF was denied by the SEC, she spoke out against the SEC's decision, uh, basically taking a stance pro-crypto against the ruling when they turned down the Winklevoss ETF. She is very pro-crypto, definitely sees what the potential of this market is and does not want to hinder any progress of technology. So she explained here, she quoted as saying, the commission should not default to a demand that the crypto markets be subject to comprehensive government regulation as a precondition to allowing products linked to those markets to be traded in markets that we regulate. So is this good news or not good news for SEC and for Bitcoin and cryptocurrency? We shall see, but that is her stance when it comes to crypto assets. Also, let's take a look at what's going on in Zimbabwe. So the headline that I, that I actually shared on the Facebook page is cryptocurrency could solve Zimbabwe's cash shortages. So the new finance minister, uh, new treasury boss, is potentially placing himself on a collision path with the country's central bank with this pro-cryptocurrency stance. Now, you can't blame them. Z Zimbabwe is one of those countries where their fiat currency is grossly inflated. You can have millions of dollars and it not be worth anything. So according to Zimbabwe's newly minted minister of finance, cryptocurrencies could assist the southern African country to solve the cash crunch that has been ongoing for the last two years. Now, as a side note, I'm going to tell you one of the first stories I heard about cryptocurrency, and I'm not talking about Bitcoin. I'm talking about cryptocurrency was used in a real world use case to solve a problem in a country and help the unbanked. Now, there are millions and millions of people across the world that are what we call unbanked. They do not have actual bank accounts to hold any of their funds, and cryptocurrency is a solution for that. Now, this was an Uber driver whose mother was Uber drivers in the USA and his mother was living in Zimbabwe. And when asked about why, you know, one of his Uber phones was showing he had a crypto chart on there. And when asked about it, he said for the last couple of years, he had been sending money to his mother in Zimbabwe through Bitcoin 
because the currency there wasn't worth anything. And she, in essence, created a small ecosystem between the different merchants and places where she needed food and supplies. She had got them to start accepting Bitcoin and created a whole ecosystem of cryptocurrency without the need for any kind of government, inside government regulation. Because if you look at what's happened with the government oversight as far as their currency in Zimbabwe, it's grossly inflated and they have a serious cash issue. So I think this finance minister is definitely on to something and definitely an exciting thing to see. Another example of cryptocurrency helping in those companies where the government has failed them with their issued currency. We've seen it happen in Turkey. We've seen it happen in Zimbabwe. We've also mentioned it in Venezuela. So it's only a matter of time before we start seeing this making an appearance, real world use adoption by the masses with cryptocurrency without any control or say so from the government, you can create your own ecosystem. So that's what's going on. All right, now Ripple is also announcing that their XRP product will go live next month or so. So Ripple's long anticipated cryptocurrency product, which aims to make XRP the asset of choice for cross-border settlements between financial institutions is finally nearing production via an actual commercial application. So hit, the head of Ripple's regulatory relations in Asia Pacific and Middle Eastern regions told CNBC that the firm believes that this product dubbed XRapid could launch as soon as a month. It's very confident the next month or so you'll see some good news coming and where we launch the product live in production, he said. Unlike the firm's other blockchain products, XRapid uses public XRP cryptocurrency for settlement, which Ripple says enhances the speed of cross-border currency transfer. So you hear Ripple in a lot of different partnerships with their technology and big name companies or banks, but most of those companies are not using the XRP cryptocurrency. They're using the blockchain, they're using their platform, but they're not using the actual XRP cryptocurrency. Supposedly XRapid is gonna drive adoption of the XRP cryptocurrency for that settlement purpose. So we will see what happens with that. I'm gonna come back to Ripple uh, in a little bit in the crypto education corner as we dig more into market caps. I uh, like to revisit that one as I'm seeing a lot of things on social media, people making outrageous claims about cryptocurrency. And I wanna kind of give everybody a, some insight on how to judge a crypto by the market cap. All right, so next up in the news, the US market crash is expected as household income explodes. So the question in this news article that I posted on the Facebook page from no crypto to no crypto is will millennials flock to Bitcoin when the US market crashes? And for the first time in history, U.S. household wealth has surged above the $100 trillion mark. It's been fueled by the rise in the value of stocks and properties. We've seen many stocks hit all-time highs. I mean, Apple and Amazon have both become trillion-dollar market cap companies. However, analysts, many analysts are saying that's unsustainable growth in household wealth could cause a crash, which may lead millennials to flock to Bitcoin. So that's what's going on there. In comparison to stagnation in actual U.S. household income, it is quite evident the rapid growth rate of U.S. household wealth cannot be sustained in the long term. So household wealth has increased, incomes have not. So that's what we're looking at. It could be a crash. All right, final up in the news today, the Los Angeles Dodgers baseball team are entering into the digital space in what they are calling the first ever crypto giveaway in not just baseball history, but also sports history. So the team announced that they're gonna be holding digital bobblehead night when the Dodgers host the Padres September 21st. So what does that mean? The first 40,000 fans will receive a card with a unique code. Fans will then visit a website where they can enter in that code and unlock a digital bobblehead, which they can then download to their Ethereum wallet. Ethereum is a public blockchain network which uses the cryptocurrency Ether. So think about what's going on here. The Dodgers are giving away a crypto to a non fungible token. We've talked about things like that, such as crypto kitties and all, but a crypto bobblehead. Now, to store that, the fan, 40,000 fans are going to need an Ethereum wallet. So I would say it's probably safe to say a good portion of that 40,000 fans may not have an Ethereum wallet, so they're gonna have to download one, they're gonna have to be given one, and to store that bobblehead. So when fans unlock their tokens, they'll randomly be giving a digital bobblehead of either Clayton Kershaw, Justin Turner, or Kenley Jansen. So interesting to see how this plays out. I think we'll see a lot more of this in the future. Digital asset tokens like this are very interesting to see. Uh, they'll be unique. If they don't ever do this type of giveaway again, it could lead to some, some value. So I really think this, hey, this could drive a lot of crypto people or just a lot of attendance as well to that baseball game on the 21st, right around the corner. 
All right, so let's take a look at the crypto uh, education corner and see what's going on. Think about what cryptocurrency allows us to do, right? It allows us to purchase without a merchant, bet without a bookie, insure without an underwriter. You can even trade a stock without a broker, get a loan without a bank. You can use escrow without an agent, and you can establish an uncensored internet without ISPs, right? No internet service providers needed. So it is giving control back to the people. So one thing you want to look at, long-term adoption is something I always talk about, but many people are speculating. Our market right now is driven mostly off of speculation and not as much off of use case. Now we're starting to see that shift, right? XRapid, XRP announced the XRapid may be ready to go in a month. We see Ripple surge over 26%, right? Tezos is announcing they're launching their own mainnet, and that's been a project that's been highly touted for well over a year. And now Tezos is up 18% over the last seven days. But when you look at a coin, what is the true potential, right? We look at, you look at the top three cryptocurrencies right now, and it's basically Bitcoin, Ethereum, and Ripple, right? Bitcoin's at 63.60 right now. Ethereum's over $212. And Ripple is at 33 cents. Oh my God, 33 cents. It sounds like it's a huge potential for growth with Ripple. But how can Ripple be ranked third at 33 cents. Well, here's the deal. Bitcoin at 6,300, you think, why can't Ripple go to 6,300? Bitcoin has a total cap of coins. Circulating supply of coins right now of 16 million and total supply whenever every Bitcoin is mined of 22 million, right? So only 22 million Bitcoins will be available. Ripple, on the other hand, has a circulating supply right now of 35 billion with a B tokens and a total market cap, a total, a total supply of 100 billion, right? So if Ripple goes to a dollar, that is a $100 billion market cap. Ripple goes to 100 bucks, that is a $100 trillion market cap, right? So when you, I'm sorry, 100, it's 100, let me start that over. It's a $1 trillion market cap. So what does that mean now that we do think cryptocurrency in the next year or two will be a multi-trillion dollar market cap and could eventually get up there. But for, you know, many people out there are claiming Ripple and other ones like Stellar. And don't get me wrong, I'm bullish on both of those as far as a value, they will go up in value. But to say that something with that big of a market cap is going to go up to $100, $200, $300, that is basically saying that is going to replace every currency value in the world because the total current value in U.S. dollar of all currencies around the world is sitting around anywhere, it's estimated anywhere from 90 to $110 trillion. So to say that one particular currency is going to have over a $100 trillion market cap is very outlandish right now when you think about uh, what is out there, how many different cryptocurrencies are available for different use cases. Now, do I think Ripple will have its place? Absolutely. They are making moves. You got to give it to that company as many people you know, hate on that cryptocurrency because they say, hey, it's not a true cryptocurrency, can't be mine, there's 100 billion of them out there. They're making moves, just like some of the other ones. So there are things that will happen that could drive you know, these cryptos to go up in value five, 10, 20 times their value, but will a cryptocurrency that's currently sitting at 33 cents go up to $300? Not very likely, unless a lot of their supply is taken off of the market for good. All right, so just remember that if you wanna do some more research on market caps, you can go into coincheckup.com, click on the cryptocurrency you want. So right now I'm clicking on Ripple, and once you click on that link, it will tell you the circulating supply right now is $39.81 billion, total max supply at 100 billion, and that's how you get the current market cap, and also you can kind of see how does that compare to other cryptocurrencies? Why can some be worth hundreds of dollars and others worth very little under a dollar? In many cases, it could be the circulating supply and a total available supply. So make sure you look at that when you're looking at crypto. That is it for our crypto education corner today. As mentioned before, all the news articles we talk about are posted on our Facebook page from No Crypto to No Crypto. If you haven't given it a like, go ahead and find it on Facebook, click like. If you want to make sure you never miss an update, never miss a podcast or a news article that we post on our Facebook page, once you like our page, click on the follow button and it will give you the option to select see first to make sure you never miss an update from our Facebook page. 
that is it, everybody, for our episode today. Hopefully some more exciting news to talk about tomorrow. We will see what's going to happen with the market. So thanks for listening in, and we'll see you on the next episode.